Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Oh, Father, we honor you this evening. We bless your holy name, O oh God. You are supreme, you're sovereign, O oh God. We're so excited, O oh God, because we are your sons and daughters, Lord God. We give you praise this evening, O oh God. Hallelujah. You alone are God. You alone are worthy, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, that you're truthful, you're faithful, you're reliable, you're a promise keeper. You cannot lie in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank Thank you, Lord. We welcome you, Lord. Welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Jesus. Come in our midst today, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I command everything to go according to the perfect plan of God, the perfect will of God in this forum. In the name of Jesus Christ, there shall be no interference at all from <coughs> any human or any demon. In the name of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> Father, we welcome you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Come and flood this place with your glory flood every person's space wherever they're listening to this word that that space so even now <coughs> excuse me be flooded with your glory and with your presence in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus good to see you my moon good to see you Kenya how are you thank you father God hi Shanti welcome thank you father God blessed be your name hi Hazel how are you doing Thank you, Father God. Kathy Ann, God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blessed be the Lord. It's a good time to praise God. Amen. I always tell people there are only two times you can praise God is when you feel like it and when you don't feel like it, which means that you should praise God all the time because God has not changed. He has not altered. He is still God. He is still on the throne. He's the only God. He's sovereign. He's holy he's righteous he's faithful if he spoke something to you he is going to do it amen is the enemy <coughs> excuse me y'all who comes to snatch things away um, or try to snatch it away from us and we are standing in this season on god's word amen this is an exciting time in the body of christ i can tell you um, that your season has changed it has changed a lot of you your season has changed but you're not aware that your season has changed you know in the natural when a, a new season starts it starts slowly it doesn't just come uh, monday it's one way and then tuesday bang it's a new season it's progressive amen and some of you are sensing or you're seeing signs of the season changing amen and so it's a good time it's a it's a wonderful time to be alive a wonderful time to be in the kingdom of god amen do you know that god created you for such a time as this it's not a mistake he created you for these end times he didn't create you to be in another century uh, another country or wherever it is he has strategically um, planned your birth for you to be here on the earth at this time because there's a purpose of god for you to fill let me just continue to pray in the name of Jesus Christ every demon on assignment is bound every plot of the enemy is destroyed now in the name of Jesus Christ God you are here Jesus you're here Holy Spirit you're here I release excitement upon us now in the name of Jesus <coughs> excuse me I command everything um, that is dull excuse me everything that is dull and dead in your life to be awakened in the name of Jesus. Some of you have lost hope. I heard that, lost hope. I bind up the spirit of lost hope. I destroy that plot of lost hope from you now in the name of Jesus, and I release hope to you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I command everything that is out of order to come into order now and come into alignment in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, cover each person, cover us under the blood of Jesus Christ, cover our family members, um, cover everything that pertains to us our ministries, or children, future destinies, grandchildren, everything at all, cover and hide us under the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that we are a blessed people in the name of Jesus, that we are wonderfully and fearfully made, and no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your word go forth with power, with your glory, Lord God. I pray for your revelation, even now, to be released to each person where they're at, whatever space they're in, whether they're in a house. Excuse me, Lord. <clears throat> 
whether they're in a room, whether they're in their car, wherever they are, Lord God, flood that place with your glory now. Flood that place with your presence now. Let your angels converge and the space they're in now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I'm so excited to release this word. Last week, I released a word um, um, for the, the, the month of July 2019. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing testimonies coming forth from that word and um, even after I released that word I listened to uh, some more prophets who are speaking the same thing amen so we do know that it is God when all the prophets are getting the same thing these are prophets of, of, of good reputation I'm talking about and so we need to hold on to what God God's word says amen hallelujah hallelujah the Lord said unto me to tell you that your season has changed I preached this word last night on our online church service but there's some more things and those of you that were in that meeting there's some more things that the Lord wanted me to release and he says your season has changed and it is time to dance all right your season has changed and it's time to dance hi Sharon how are you darling your season has changed and it's time to dance um, <clears throat> there is a time and season for everything and sometimes we want something and we want something to happen and God is saying it's not your time and it's not your season and so God is the only one that determines the times and seasons hi hi June how are you God is the only one that determines your time and your season all right and when your season has come it has come amen and God is saying your season has changed I'm going to read from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 8 and I want you to note, this is a passage that is very well known. I want you to note that all these things in this passage, it speaks of opposites, opposites, all right? So it says, to everything there is a season, all right? To everything there is a season. Everything that has to happen, everything in your life, there's a season for it, amen? And so it says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. God is the one that determines the seasons. He's the one that determines the time. And it goes on to say in verse 2, it's, that there's a time to be born and a time to die. So those are opposites there, right? Throughout this whole passage, you'll find opposites. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. And there's a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. In other words, there's a time for harvest, amen? There's a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. There's a time to weep. Hi, Anjali, how are you? There's a time to weep and a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn and a time to dance. And I'm going to be talking about that today, the word of the Lord. There's a time to mourn and there's a time to dance. In verse 5, it goes on to say it's a time, there's a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. There's a time to embrace and there's a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow, S-E-W, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. So, so to everything there is a season and there's a time for ever under heaven and God again is the one who determines the times and the seasons. What I'm going to be speaking to the prophetic word of the Lord today is that there's a time to mourn and a time to dance. Many of you, many of us have been in a season of mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. And the word of the Lord to you is it's time to dance because your winter is past. Your winter is past. What does mourn mean? Mourn means to lament. It means to grieve deeply. It means to pine away. It's not just feeling sad, but it is to pine away. You're suffering because of the pain. You're mourning the loss of something, the loss of somebody, the loss of a spouse, the loss of a job, the loss of a ministry, whatever it is, all right? And so in the Hebrew, the word mourn means to droop. So when you're mourning, it's like you droop, you're drooping, you're 
you you're sad you're wilting you can't seem to go forth you're just going through the paces and the motions and you're smiling and people don't know what's going on in you you're mourning the loss of a family member and the person may not have died but they have gone from you and God is saying <coughs> it is time to dance amen the word also means in Hebrew to be sick it means to languish which means to waste away to suffer to be weak that's mourning mourning is a time of depression when you're so depressed that you can't tell anybody you're depressed because they're not going to understand it a lot of people are depressed and they don't realize that they are depressed you feel like you don't want to bathe um, you're lying down in bed all day you feel heavy you're crying all the time you can't take any pressure you can't cope right you don't want to go out so if you do go out uh, whatever it is that you're dealing with it's so you're so depressed you know, when you're depressed, you even dress differently. A lot of times you dress in darker clothes. I used to suffer with depression as a, a child and a young woman. And I used to wear very dark clothes and I didn't realize it. But as the joy came, I started wearing brighter colors. All right. So mourning is a time of depression. It's a time of darkness. It's a time of weeping. And it's a time of deep sorrow. But the word dance and the Lord is saying it's time to dance. And dance means to celebrate. It means to spring about wildly for joy, right? Your hands thrown in the air and you're happy uh, because you were mourning and now you're dancing. So to dance means to rejoice, to rejoice, to celebrate. Uh, amen? Now we're going to look at natural seasons. And a season in the natural is a period normally characterized by a particular kind of weather. All right. In temperate climates, you have uh, four divisions of the air, which are spring, summer, autumn, and winter. In the Caribbean, where, where I was born, in Trinidad and Tobago, we have like the wet season, the dry season, right? But I'm talking now about the four seasons uh, in the natural spring, summer, autumn, and winter. All right. So in temperate climates, you have spring, you have summer, you have autumn, and you have winter. And these seasons are marked by specific weather patterns and daylight hours, and that results from the earth changing its position with regard to the sun. Amen? Things have been repositioned in your life. You have entered into your season of change, your season of breakthrough, says the Lord, and it is a result of God actually changing your position, repositioning you. In the natural, um, in different seasons, you have different events that take place depending on the season. You also experience different things in each season. For example, in the winter, two of the things that happen in the winter is that it's extremely cold and it's dark. All right. In spring, there's a birthing and there's a rebirthing of things. Flowers bloom and the earth begins to come alive. The summer is very hot and can be very unbearable. Also, people say, I like the summer, but you like sweating. You're going outdoors. It's a chore to go outdoors. There's a heat wave. You can't deal with it anymore. You can't wear the same clothes anymore. You got to strip and wear something very, very um, <coughs> thin and short. All right. To keep out of the sun. Now, autumn, which is also known as fall, is cloudy, it's rainy, and it's wet. All right? It's a kind of a miserable time. The leaves begin to fall. And I like How I like to put it is that autumn can't seem to make up its mind if it is to be warm or cold. <laughs> all right? And so you have all this happening. So autumn is kind of an in-between season. And so it is in spiritual seasons. The Lord is asking you today, do you know what season you are in? Do you know what season you're in right now? It is critical that you know what season you are in. He's also saying to ask you, do you understand what season you're in? Because there's a difference between knowing and understanding. You, When you know something, it means that you have information about something or somebody. You have that information, right? This knowledge, something has been given to you. All right, some knowledge about something. But when you understand, you're actually grasping the significance, the implications, and importance of what you know. All right? So you're grasping it. You understand it. There's some things that people know. You might hear, okay, my season has changed, but you just know it up here, but you haven't understood it. You haven't grasped it. It's not in your spirit. It's not in your soul. It's not in your blood. It's not in your DNA. But at the end of this word, it is going to be as you open your spirits and begin to let God speak 
into your spirit and you receive what he says. Amen? So you can have knowledge but not understanding. God is saying again, I'm going to repeat it so many times, your season has changed. This is your season. This is your time. Your time has come. It is not time to mourn. Your mourning has passed. It is time to dance. This is your time in which your purpose on the earth will manifest. Get ready to reap whatever you have sown. Amen. I'm going to read Song of Solomon 2, verses 11 to 13. All right. And in verse 11, it says, For behold, the winter is past. The rain is gone and over and gone. Right. For behold, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. All right. God is saying your winter has passed. It might still feel like it's winter, but God says your winter has passed because when there's a seasonal change, um, in the natural, as I said, it don't just bang happen the next day. It's gradual. It's progressive. Amen. So God is going to show you signs that your season has changed. And right. And you think, let me tell you something. Eh? Sometimes we think when God is going to do something, it, he blows a trumpet before. Doo -doo -doo -doo, or there's a loud noise or a bang. But let me tell you, the things of God manifest very slowly. It just creeps into your life, amen? And you look back and you say, what's going on? How did this happen? Verse 11, for behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. It goes on to say in verse 12, the flowers appear on the earth once again. A time for singing has come and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree has budded and ripens her figs and the vines are in blossom and give forth their fragrance. Verse 11 in this passage, passage rather, Song of Solomon 2, 11 to 13, deals with winter. God is saying your winter has passed. Verses 12 to 13 are about spring. All right. Now in the natural, most people hate winter, all right? There's some people that do, I don't. <laughs> winter is the least loved, hi Anna, how are you darling? Winter is the least loved of the four seasons. Spring is the most loved, and it's a, it's a fact. Um, statistically, spring is the most loved of the four seasons. I'm gonna read that again. Song of Solomon 2, I'm reading verse 11. For behold, the winter is past. God is saying your season has changed. Your springtime has come. You're in the season of spring. The winter is past. So let's look at what happens when there's a natural winter. Some of the things. First thing is that there's darkness, all right? There's just not enough daylight. It, it gets dark earlier, right? Because you have you changed the time, you adjusted the, the, um, the time clock has changed. Um, and early morning, you get up, it's dark in the morning. And when you're coming home in the evening, it's dark as well. Those of you that are living in temperate climates will understand what I'm saying. All right. And so that darkness, what does that mean when you've been in a winter season of your life, right? So there's a parallel. God uses natural things to teach us spiritual things. There's a parallel. In your winter, it seems like there's darkness. What is darkness? When it's dark, you can't see. Um, you felt like you're hedged in that you can't see your way out of your situation, your problems. You've tried everything that you know to do, all right, but you haven't seen which way to go. You're wondering, Lord, give me direction. Should I go left? Should I go right? Should I go forward? Um, what should I do? All right, so you can't see when it's dark. There seems to be no answers and no manifestation of the promises of God. That's in your winter when it's dark. There's also a condition in winter called seasonal affective disorder, which spells sad, believe it or not, sad. There are people that um, go through seasonal depression. I have actually seen people who don't smile or laugh in the winter, all right? Unless you're naturally cheerful and you laugh whatever uh, in whatever season that you're in. And that reminds me of my friend Hazel, who is on here. She's always smiling and bubbly, all right? <laughs> but I've seen people... When it's winter, they don't smile as much, they don't laugh, but as soon as it gets warmer, they're smiling and they're outside and they're happy, all right? So what happens is that with this disorder, and this really happens to people, I, I had a brother-in-law who suffered with this um, in the winter, he suffered with seasonal affective disorder, which is a, a, a depression, right, that comes in certain seasons. So, hi, Apostle Bernadette, how are you? 
So the symptoms actually start in the fall and continue into the winter months. And so there's depression, there's sorrow, and there's sadness. In your winter season in the spirit realm, you can suffer with depression, uh, you're, you're, you're sad, and you can't deal with the issues anymore. And it produces a lot of depression because you're trying to move forward and you haven't seemed to be able to move forward. All right. Now, in the winter as well, in the natural, there is dry air. Dry air is really not a good thing um, because the winter air has a low humidity. And so because of that, it's, it's less moist so that it dries out your skin. It even um, dries out your mucous membranes. It makes your skin itchy and your throat scratchy. And sometimes you get nosebleed. Dry air can also aggravate your sinuses, create sinus trouble, asthma, or cause discomfort if you have a cold or cough. So in the state of your winter, all right, it seems like everything is drying up in your life, that nothing is working or you're at a standstill or you feel like you're running on a treadmill. Um, you know, the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. You can even feel sick. The, the pain that you have experienced emotionally, sometimes it affects you physically and you begin to feel sick as well. Winter is a dead season. There's nothing growing and everything is dying. Everything sort of comes to a standstill. And that's what a lot of you have been experiencing in the winter season of your life. In the winter, in the natural, there are no leaves on the trees. Um, they fell during autumn and now there are no leaves on the trees. So you're only seeing brown uh, uh, trees everywhere with no leaves and, and just sticks. All right. Um, the flowers do not bloom when it is in when it's winter because it's a dead season. So what does that happen? You've been in the winter of your, your of your life. Some of you have been in winter for a very, very long time and you're not blooming. You have been barren, barren in terms of things not moving forward, things not growing. You're not producing what you thought you would produce. You're still at the same place. You're still at a standstill. You're trying to make things work. You're trying to cause things to happen. You get one, one idea comes to you and you run with it and all of a sudden it doesn't work and you're back to square one and you're wondering, what do I do? Nothing seems to be growing. Nothing seems to be, in other words, developing. Nothing seems to be happening like it should. Or maybe there's very little that is growing, very little that is developing or happening. All right, you're getting a trickle here or a trickle there. Um, you, you're you getting some money in, in one quarter and then you have to spend it on something else. All right, so that's when you're in your winter season. And in winter as well, it is extremely cold. It can get very, very cold. And those of you who live in a temperate climate, it can be very uncomfortable. As again, some people like the winter. They like it when it's cold, but I really don't like it. Um, I've had 27 winters of my life and I, I can't deal with it. And so um, it's uncomfortable. When it's cold, it's uncomfortable. It's unpleasant. And the other thing about it is that you have to change um, the way that you dress. You begin to wear some heavy winter coats, depending on how cold it is, and then you have to put on layers. Um, so it takes time to, to, to wear the clothes that you have to wear. You've got to layer yourself, put on several uh, T-shirts, whatever it is, and layer properly. Um, you put on a heavy winter coat, a thick scarf. You have to wear gloves, hats. You have to wrap up your face, depending on how cold it is. And so it actually takes longer to dress. It takes very longer to dress when it's cold. And so it's very hard work sometimes um, in the winter um, because it takes a longer time to get ready. You've got to put on all these different clothes and it's like a weight upon you. All right. In your winter season, the, 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 the heaviness that you feel is like wearing um, all these uncomfortable cold clothes. Um, heavy winter coats, there's a burden, you feel a burden, you feel something weighing you down, you're like, it should be better than this, it should be more than this, why, why am I not advancing, I feel like I'm losing my mind, what is going on, right? Another thing in the winter is that there are snowstorms sometimes, or heavy slow, snow, sorry, and so what that means, it's, it's pretty, it's nice to see people ask you, oh Lord, the snow, yeah, um, but you have to end up shoveling that snow, and it's a lot of work, right, to shovel snow off of your side, sidewalk and um, to shovel snow off of your steps if wherever you're living um, you have to scrape snow and ice off of your car which means you have to get up earlier than normal you want to 
sleep a little later and you can't because you have to allow for time now to scrape snow and ice off your vehicle. You have to dig out your car. If the snow is so thick and your car is almost buried, you have to dig out your car. And it is hard and arduous work. And this is what happens in your winter. It seems hard. It seems arduous. It seems like you're fighting. You're fighting to get a breakthrough. When you think you get a breakthrough, it hasn't happened. And so all of this, the um, having to deal with the cold and, and dress in a certain way with heavy clothes and the snowstorms or heavy snow, it speaks of your winter being filled with trials and tribulations. How many of you have been dealing or were dealing with a lot of trials and tribulations in your life? Everything seemed to be hitting you at the same time. You get excited because something seems to be happening and then it doesn't happen. It's a season in your winter where you are under oppression, you're suffering or you're being persecuted. But God, God is saying to you that because he said, yes, your winter season has been hard and many of you have wanted to quit. Many of you have wanted to give up and say, I can't deal with this. Maybe it's something you were waiting on and it's taking too long. And you said, Lord, I can't deal with this. You promised this. It seems to be broken. It can't be fixed. And it has been hard. You've had sleepless nights. You've been tormented. You're depressed. You went through all these different things and you're wondering, God, have you forgotten me? And God said, yes, your winter has been hard. But what happened, what I saw with a lot of people, he said, you have fought and you've pressed in your winter season. You did not quit. You might have on a Monday got so fed up and say, Lord, I can't take this anymore. I don't, I don't want to be in ministry. I don't want to do this anymore. I, I can't deal with this situation. I want to quit. I want to go backwards or whatever it is. Some people have said, I've heard people say, I want to die. I can't stand it anymore. But when you got up the next day, you realize I can't quit. I can't give up on God. And you continued to fight and press in the midst of of your pain, in the midst of your oppression, in the midst of your suffering, in the midst of your persecution. Some of you, I'm seeing, you decided, well, yeah, I'm just not going to take this on. And so what you did is like you disassociated yourself from the problem, but it's still there. The pain is still there, but you just suppressed it. But the situation is still there and you're still living with it. And you decide to do something else instead in the meantime. But eventually that situation has to be dealt with. Amen? In Psalm 26 and verse 5, rather, it says, Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Many of you have sown in tears. God is saying you shall reap in joy. If you have sown bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. And God said, yes, you have sown. And people here are sowing, they think of money only. But no, you have sown your time. You have sown your time. You have sown in prayer. You've sown in intercession. You've interceded for others. You have sown in worship. You have ministered to others. You have sown um, when you didn't feel like sowing. You've been there to encourage others. You, you felt hopeless. You felt despair, but you did not quit. You did not give up on the Lord. And that is what God honors. Amen. You've made it through the winter and your spring is here. Your springtime is here. I'm going to read Song of Solomon 2, but I'm going to read now from verse 12. Um, the first part on verse 11 says, your winter is past, the rain is over and gone. In 11, sorry, verse 12 to 13, it says, the he said, this is actually the spring, your springtime is here. It says, the flowers appear on the earth once again. The time for singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree has budded and ripens her figs. Notice there has to be a budding first, all right? <coughs> Some of you are budding. You're in your spring, and things are budding, all right? And the vines are in blossom and give forth their fragrance, so in the natural, we're going to look at spring in the natural. What happens in the natural when there's spring? The temperatures change, all right? It changes gradually, all right? And um, it becomes warmer and warmer and warmer. Some of you are in the beginning of your spring season, and things are beginning to bud. There's some change. There's some life. You've seen some flashes of light, or maybe you haven't, and I will explain why in a minute. So you, the temperatures change. It becomes warmer. The temperature becomes comfortable. It's not as hot, as hot rather as summer, and it's not as cold as winter. It's a season in the in the spiritual realm. When you're in this season, it means that you're in a place of peace. 
right? You are at rest. You've entered into the rest of the Lord. All of a sudden, you realize, oh my God, this, these, these things are not bothering me anymore. I've entered into God's rest. What happened? How did it happen? When did it happen? All right. And so in spring as well, there's more daylight. Um, the days begin lasting longer and the nights get shorter. All right. And, you know, research <laughs> has actually shown that those extra hours of sun actually boosts people's moods. Right. In, in the spring of extra hours of sun, people's moods change, not like in the winter. And the longer the sun um, was up, this is research, during the day, the less mental distress people experienced. As long as the sun was up and long, as long as it was up, they had less mental distress. All right. So when you're in your springtime, you will be, you will experience less mental distress or none at all. All right. You begin to look at situations, difficulty. You're going to say, well, this thing don't bother me anymore. You know, you'll be able to cope. The enemy's attacks are weakened and you have peace. He's still trying to attack, <coughs> but it's his attacks have weakened and you have a peace that you just can't understand at all. And you actually can laugh at the devil because you realize that all you were bothered about and all that the enemy attacked you with, like doubt, fear, torment, lack, was a lie. Is a lie. The devil is a liar. As you come into your spring, into your harvest, you're going to say, boy, this is all the stuff I was worrying about. I, I didn't think it was going to happen. And look at this. Things have turned around for my good. God is, has been working on my behalf all the time. And you begin to say, that devil is a liar. All right. And you begin to laugh at him and you say, wait a minute, this is what I was bothered about. This is what I was scared about. This is what I thought wasn't going to happen. This is what I thought was going to fail. <laughs> and all the tormenting nights and days that you had of doubt and, and, and fear and whatever it is, it was a lie from the pit of hell. You are now seated at the table that God has prepared for you in the presence of your enemies. That is what you call a turnaround, a complete turnaround taking place in your life. All right. So <clears throat> you're looking at things differently. And you're seated at the table that God prepared for you in the presence of your enemies. People who said no before are going to say yes. People who said that will never happen, they're going to say yes. They will say, I don't know why I'm doing this. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm doing this. Way. People that left you that are supposed to be with you, they're going to come back. All right, and, and you will be like, oh my God, what happened? This thing looked dead like it won't go work in the, at all. And there's going to be a restoration. Now, in the natural, again, in the spring, the earth comes alive right everything comes alive when it's spring in winter it's dead but in the spring things become alive for example the birds return now many animals and, and birds and other animals they migrate south during the winter where to go where it's warm and then they head north as the temperatures get warmer in the north they they come back all right they, they come back to where they were they they go south and then when it gets warmer they come back home what has gone south in your life who has gone south in your life god said they're gonna come back home says the lord this is for somebody or for more than one person here this evening amen and so in the spring, the birds are singing. That's how you know it's spring. A lot of time you hear the birds chirping and they're springing, springing, singing, singing, singing. All right. And God's saying, in this, your season of spring, it is time to dance. It is time to celebrate. It's time to rejoice in your spring season, whether you feel like it or not. Another thing that happens in spring, in the natural, again, the animals return from hibernation as a, a hibernation and they come back they come back to where they belonged right things are going to come back to you where they belong people are going to come back to you where they belonged all the time baby animals are born because many animals reproduce in the spring when temperatures are warmer and food is plentiful it is a fact all right so what does that mean it means for you that there's going to be no more barrenness some of you have had barren seasons in your life you've waited for years and something some of you got your midst marriage and and god wants you to be married he wants you to know that he puts a solitary in family sometimes when you 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 tell other christians have a very strange idea about somebody who wants to be married to tell them keep your eyes on god you're not serving god you don't love god yes you do you love god you're serving god you want god but god wants you to be married he puts a solitary in families amen 
if God didn't want man to be married, he would not have created Eve for Adam. All right? So that's my take on that. God's take on it. All right? So it's a good thing. All right? So what happens is there'll be no more barrenness because now you're beginning to produce. You're going to see productivity. You're going to see fruitfulness in things that you put your hands to. Things are going to work. Your babies are being born. In other words, your promises are being born. They're manifesting. Amen. Another thing, um, when there's spring, <coughs> because it's been so cold before, <coughs> you can now go outside, right, and stay outside longer because it's warmer. And it's actually a, a, a fact, a scientific fact, that spending more time outdoors is great for mental health. Research has also found that taking walks in the nature, it slows your heart rate, it makes you more relaxed. But if you do it in the spring, according to research, it has a positive effect on your brain. All right? It produces a better mood and better memory. That's why God, when God gives, gives us different things and he speaks and there's a meaning behind it, when he teaches us using natural things, there's a spiritual uh, factor involved in that. There's a spiritual parallel, all right? So it would produce a better mood and better memory. You can go outside. What does that mean? It means that the hedges are broken. You've been trying to break through. You felt like you're trapped. You're like in a maze. And now the hedges are broken. The walls are broken. The pathways in the spirit that were hidden are being revealed. When you couldn't figure out how do I get out of this or how do I fix this? I can't do it. I don't know the way. I don't have to pray. I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm worrying. I decree and declare. I don't know what's going on. And God said the the, the walls are going to be broken. Uh, um, you'll be able to break through now. You can break through. You can go forth. The chains are broken. Your captivity has ended your mind is free you have better mental health you can think better the confusion is gone and now you have clarity things you were confused about before clarity is going to come here so oh, yeah this is it wow this is what it's supposed to be this is what it oh my god i couldn't see this before all right so also in the spring and what i really love to is the flowers begin to bloom right so remember all the flowers they've died flower now flowers bloom in the spring uh, when they sense that the days have grown longer and the weather has turned warmer right that's what happens all right so the days have grown longer and the weather has turned warmer and so the flowers begin to bloom in the spring you are going to bloom in your spring things in your life that were dead are going to produce life and grow now not everything there's some things that god wants dead and you're going to know which they are. But I'm seeing things that you thought was dead and hopeless and you gave up on. Some of you have had dreams for years that have not been fulfilled. Some of you had prophecies concerning your purpose in ministry and so many things. And, and you haven't seen it yet. But in the springtime of your life, it is just going to bloom. It's going to produce. It's going to grow. All right. And you'll be like, wow, what's going on? In the spring as well, the leaves come back on the trees. All right, so the leaves where the, the leaves will off the trees in the winter season in your in your in the spring, the leaves begin to come back on the trees that begin to flourish and look green, they look lovely, they're filled out. All right, so what that means for you in the spring of your life, there's a rebirthing that's going to take place and a restoration of all that was stolen from you. How many of you God has spoken that? He said, I'm going to restore all that was spoken sorry, stolen from you, amen? And that occurs because God is the one that determines the times and the season, and this is your season, says the Lord. Plants begin to grow in the spring, all right? Now, we know of the process of um, called photosynthesis, where plants convert sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water into food, releasing oxygen in the process. So that means as plants start to grow in the spring, they pull the carbon out of the atmosphere, right? Which is great for the environment because too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is actually bad. It becomes carbon dioxide, could become a poisonous gas when there's too much of it in the air that you breathe. And it can also um, cause poisoning that can lead to damage to people's or, or even animals' central nervous system and respiratory deterioration in humans and other breathing creatures it also can have negative effects on the planet and the atmosphere <coughs> right so what god is saying here in your spring season your environment and your atmosphere changes not only do you change not only 
uh, that uh, or things or people around you, but your environment is going to change. The atmosphere is going to, to change. You're not going to feel that heaviness and the oppression anymore. You're going to feel light. You're going to sense the presence of God because your spring season is here. Amen? A spring is a season of harvest. Many vegetables and fruits are harvested in the spring. Spring is the time to reap your harvests. As I said, some of you have sown some big seed. And again, some people feel when they hear seed that it only means money. When you sow of your time unto the Lord, when you sow in worship, you're getting up early in the morning to worship, you're sowing. Amen? And so uh, another thing in the... Let me go here. Thank you, Jesus. Like God is saying, it's it's your time to dance. It is your time to dance. And dance means to celebrate. It means to spring about wildly in joy because your morning is over. M O N I N G. Spring is here. Amen. Well, what the Lord showed me is that some of you, your spring has come, but you're still living in the winter. And you're still living in the winter because that's all you've known. You've all you've known is winter, or maybe we've had a long period of winter where things were desolate, where things seemed to be dead, nothing producing. Maybe you've been sick for a very long time, and you're still living in the winter because you've gotten used to it and you figured out there's no hope for me. This situation is not going to change. And God's saying your spring has sprung, <laughs> but you're still living in the winter. He said it's time to take off your heavy winter clothes. You can imagine somebody in a temperate climate and winter has passed and they're still wearing thick, heavy winter clothes and hats and gloves and their face wrapped around and people will say, what's wrong with you? The temperature has changed, but you're still wearing your winter clothes. God said, take off your heavy winter clothes. The heavy winter clothes in your life refers to depression. It refers to bondage. It refers to barrenness. It refers to sorrow. All right? Sorrow, you gotta, you gotta take that off. So how do you take that off? I'm gonna pray and we're gonna pick that off in the name of Jesus. In Psalm 30 and five, it says, weeping may endure for a night. That night is your winter that you've been through, winter, all right? So weeping may endure for a winter season. The word endure, you had to, some of you had to endure some things, you had to endure. The word endure means to suffer, something painful or difficult patiently all right some of you haven't felt like you've been patient but you have been patient because you didn't quit all right so endure means to suffer something painful or difficult patiently so weeping may endure for a night or it endure for a winter but joy comes in the morning and second timothy two to three it says, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Do you know that we are to endure hardship? A lot of people, when they became saved, or even as an older Christian, they don't figure that there's war involved. They don't figure that they will suffer with some sort of attacks. Um, the Bible says, they that desire to live in uh, godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. They don't want to hear that verse. I said, oh, I don't see that. No. All right. So we have seasons when we are going through all these things. In 1 Corinthians 4.12, it says, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we endure. We got to endure. We got to continue to endure. Again, in that verse of, uh, let me read my Bible here again. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Psalm 30 and 5, it goes on to say, but joy comes in the morning. The morning refers to spring. The night refers to winter, the winter of your life. And morning, in uh, M-O-R-N-I-N-G, refers to spring. Spring is a season of new beginnings. Again, the animals awaken and the earth seems to come alive again. God is bringing the dead things in your life to life again. How many of you are ready for that? Amen. He's saying to rejoice now. <laughs> rejoice and give thanks for what has already been released to you. Um, a lot of people that, <coughs> that I've been ministering to lately have said to me, I don't know how to pray anymore. I don't feel like praying. And I said, well, why is that? God said, because it's a time to rejoice. It's a time to thank me for what I've done. You haven't seen it yet, but begin to thank him. Well, if it's a ministry, say, thank you, Lord, I have the ministry. If it's a marriage, say, thank you, Lord, I've got the marriage. If, if it's a, a something, whatever it is, my children, your, 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 whatever, your grandchildren, your ministry, whatever it is, begin to thank him, begin to thank him, he said, and it is going to manifest. 
it is going to manifest hallelujah thank you jesus i want to share something else um this is something that i i have been reading for a very long time and it's very interesting years ago when i read it um some of you may know this if you live in america uh, if you're an american um there's a celebration that happens every year on june the 19th and it's called juneteenth maybe you've heard of it um, Juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. So uh, Juneteenth, Juneteenth J-U-N-E-T-W-N-T-H, all right, it is a nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States, and it's the oldest one. So what happened is that President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation became official on, I'm just, just listen to this, right? Became official on January the 1st, 1863. But the news of the emancipation of slaves did not reach Texas until June 19th, 1865. So for two and a half years, they did not know that they were actually free because the word had not reached them yet. It was only on June 19, 1865, that they were informed that they were actually free since 1863. And so they were informed of this. I'm gonna read the actual proclamation here. Not of um, President Lincoln, but of, um, of, of a proclamation in Texas in June, 19th, 1865, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and the rights of property between former masters and slaves and the connection, I'm gonna break it down, heretofore existing between them becomes that between employer and hired labor. The freed men are advised to remain quietly at their present homes and work for wages. So what he's saying is that this is the proclamation, you're free, all right, there's now absolute equality, your, 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 your personal rights and your rights of property are, are equal to your former masters and the connection now with your former masters are that of employer and hired labor. And this was on June 19th, 1865, even though the proclamation, the Emancipation Proclamation was on, on, on in 1918, rather, 63. So the slaves in Texas did not know that their season had changed. They had been free for two and a half years, but they were living like slaves. They were now actually free after two and a half years because the word had not reached them of this. And so they continued to be enslaved. The Lord is saying the word has reached you. It has reached us, God's word. Our season has changed and it is time to dance. Amen, 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 amen. One thing I want to caution you about is that do not start back the cycle. What is the cycle? There's something that the enemy may introduce into your life, and it's an open door that will spiral you down into the same cycle of defeat. And it's very, very subtle. He says, do not start back that cycle. The enemy is going to come and try to say, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? And it's something that opened the door to cause you to spiral downwards, all right? So, and the Lord is also saying, watch for lying symptoms because the enemy tries to bring lying symptoms and say to you, hey, you know, this, this, this really didn't happen, you know. I mean, he's trying to bring the same thing that looks like a pattern of what you went through in your winter, all right? But be, be very mindful of that and do not, do not receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Karabushi, karahandara busaya. How many of you have been blessed by this word? I'm just going to pray over you now in the name of Jesus. I speak into your life right now that your winter is past and your springtime is here. I impart it into your spirit, into your soul, into your body, into your blood, into your DNA, into every part of you now. Let it, let it just overwhelm you. Let it flood you. Let it saturate you in the name of Jesus. I bind up and remove every lie of the devil that will tell you otherwise. I release hope to you. It is your time to dance. I release the celebratory spirit upon you, the spirit of worship to come upon you now that you begin to dance and celebrate what the Lord has said in the name of Jesus Christ. 
life that you would believe it. There would be no doubt in the name of Jesus. I pray right now. I thank you for the shift. I thank you for the change of your season now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. O shekarabu shikatarahandara busaya. Your season is past. Your season of winter is past. If you don't believe it, just begin to say, my season, my winter season is past. Amen. And I am in the springtime of my life in the name of Jesus. God said, I, I, I just command all the heavy oppression, the heavy winter coats, so to speak, the heavy garments that have been placed upon you to be removed. I command heaviness to go now completely and not to return. I break the chains of bondage over your soul, over whatever part of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I uproot every evil seed that the enemy planted in you in the name of Jesus. I set you free right now from captivity. The chains are broken in the name of Jesus. I release you now to go forth into your purpose, into joy. I release joy to come upon you and heaviness to go whatever your situation is. I command the atmosphere to change. I command that situation to change now in the name of Jesus Christ. So Some of you dealing with some situations that you can't get out of right i'm just seeing it, it maybe somebody that's in your life and god is going to fix that thing in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i command whatever lie this person has been speaking to you to be to be um to be exposed to other people in the name of jesus christ that is for somebody i don't know who it is for but I speak it forth now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shanti, the Lord saying, don't go back, don't go back. The enemy is going to try to come and tell you you've, you've been through a lot of seasons of winter in your life. And God says, this is your springtime. It's a time for you to spring forth into your purpose, into joy, into everything that the Lord has for you. I take off your winter clothes off of you now every heaviness to go now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i have a word for um soraya I, I don't know if she's on here she probably will listen to it um at some other point of time and what the lord showed me um soraya you've been through a lot of winters in your life a lot of the times of desolation a uh, time of sorrow and suffering and so many things of bit you've been through it's like you've been battered by the storms of life you have experienced a lot of betrayals in your life from from different people you've been waiting for a very long time for things to begin to happen in your life and um, God showed me your face um, today so clearly and he began to speak to me about you you've dealt with unhappiness and rejection abandonment but God said you've been faithful to serve me you've been faithful to minister to many people in the midst of your sorrow in the midst of your loneliness and God said your time has come you've waited a very long time this is for Soraya um, uh, um, Soraya, and this is this word is for Soraya, and he said, your springtime has come, there's going to be no more lack. He said, I've been preparing you. He said, I'm going to grant you your heart's desires, and what I saw um, is that your one of your greatest heart desires is for a husband, is for your Boaz, and God said, it is granted to you. Your husband is going to come, says God. It's going to be the right fit this time, says the Lord. God said, I mean to bless you. I mean to bless you, because you've been a blessing to me. You've ministered to so many people. You've Led people to the Lord. It's like you have an anointing for salvation. You've, you've spoken to so many people. And God says, your winter is past, beloved daughter. Beloved daughter. I have seen your tears, your pain, your hurt. You've had losses. And God said, you're going to recover. You're going to recover abundantly, says the Lord. Says the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. I'm hearing this for my dear friend Anna Stevenson as well, Prophet Anna Stevenson, um, who joined us uh, some uh, a little while ago. Um, God is saying to you too that your winter has passed. He said, I have not forgotten you, that secret desire that you've had. He said, I am fulfilling it. He said, um, you, you're going to know it <laughs> when it presents itself to you. You're going to know it and it will be different this time, says the Lord, because you are you have entered into the spring of your life. Things are going to bloom. Things are going to blossom. I'm even here in a financial breakthroughs are coming. Monies are coming. Um, uh, your husband is coming. That's what I was actually speaking about earlier. Your husband is coming. And there's going to be a financial breakthrough because you're a blessing. You're sown and sown and you're sown some big seed. And I'm not 
to, uh, just talking about money at, at all, but you're sown into people's lives. You, you're a giver. You've given up stuff. You've given things to people. You've given up yourself. You've given up your time. And, and God said, I am about to bless your socks off, woman of God. This is Anna Stevenson. Thank you, Jesus. A blessed, a wonderful person, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. So, and for Kenya, um, Kenya, the Lord is saying you suffered some losses. It has brought some confusion, things that you don't understand. And you wondered why. God said, I'm going to restore um, what has been stolen from you, what you have lost, says the Lord. Because he said, I love you so very much, daughter. I love you. I love you. I love you. There's a great call. Um, Kenya, as you know, Kenya was, um, I was Kenya's pastor. Uh, she and her family. And God said, there's a great, great call still upon your life. Um, and it's not just ministry. He said, I'm going to use you to change some things in different systems in the in the in the earth in in the United States, um, things in in um, in education, um, things in the area of um, of laws that are going to be changed. You're a brilliant woman with a brilliant mind. You're going to impact the lives of so many people. It is not just. Uh, ministry like preaching and whatever but the, the destiny that God has for you is to impact the educational systems the legal systems and so many different things you're going to continue to rise and you're going to continue to be promoted says God there's another promotion coming I read where you um, you got another job I've been following up on you um, but there's a great great promotion coming and it's going to affect um, things nationally says the Lord nationally uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So she caraboko, racanta de bosa, kike de canta da bahaya, racanta da boshaya. I know I said this to my moon so many times, but God is just showing me this again, and I'm laughing. Oh, I'm laughing for joy for you. God is saying, as you expand your territories, He said, I'm expanding your territories. Um, he said, I'm stretching out your curtains and your tent because there's so much more that I'm going to pour into you and for you, says the Lord. That's for my moon. In the name of Jesus, so Shekarabande de Katarabahaya, Apostle Bernadette, good to see you. God says, Karabo Katarabo Sanda, it's been a long winter for you. It's been a long winter. You have been kind of tucked away and hidden away, says God. He said, It's time to come out into the spring, time to come out into the sun because your voice must be heard, says God. You've been in the, in the back burner for too long. He said, It's time, and my hand is upon you, and I'm calling you out i'm calling you forth says god in the name of jesus even now i just release the fire of god to come upon you now in the name of jesus this is apostle bernadette a dear friend of mine in trinidad in the name of jesus christ god said what the devil meant for evil i'm turning it around for your good now says the lord no more winter no more winter only spring 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 it shall spring forth says the lord Kia, I saw you today in the spirit. It's good to see you. <laughs> I saw you today in the spirit. I saw you with some white shoes. I saw you looking at wedding gowns. I saw you looking at flowers. I saw you preparing for a wedding, um, your wedding. And God said he has not forgotten. It's coming soon. I see you laughing and seeing you as a beautiful bride walking down the aisle. And when that man of God comes alongside you, God said he's going to compliment you. He's going to love you. He's going to cover you. He's going to love you as Christ loves the church, says God. He said, I've saved the very best for you. And your time has come now, says God. Thank you, Lord. Kayature Karianto Rakate Shokoto no Kotorobunda Basha Mikaireo Karahandere Hoshe Bahakara Hukana Hisa Ke Elahashe Mokara Kande So Sheke Karabahai. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want you all to get excited. Uh, I command all doom and gloom to go because that's the things that the, the enemy puts on us and, uh, and, and stuff, especially uh, women. Uh, man, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, um, but women in particular tend to suffer so much. Um, and I'm, I'll tell you why the enemy attacks women a lot, because he knew that his defeat would come through the seed of the woman. 
all right? <laughs> he knew <laughs> that he would be, de be defeated by the seed of the woman, which is Jesus Christ. So there are some heavy attacks that have come upon women. If you, women, if you look globally, things that women go through, they go through rape, they go through um, persecution, suffering, um, poverty, so many things um, that happens to women. But God told me this is a season, especially for women, um, men too. But as the God said, the women, I would rise up. I saw a mighty army. I saw this a couple of years ago, but I, a mighty army of women rising up it's like they were they, like they came out of the earth because they were hidden for so long and i actually heard them roar in the spirit like like lionesses i could hear them roaring roaring and just going forth and taking back territory taking back all they lost there they're going to win back their families they're going to win the nations of the world for christ and god said this is a time that woman is mobilizing women like never before says god the Lord also showed me this. I don't know when he would have me release this, but this is for a lot of things that is happening um, with our men. And um, he said the devil is after after our men, and our men could be husbands, um, it could be brothers, it could be um, uncles or whoever the men are. There's a, there's an attack against men, and it has increased, especially in this hour, because the the enemy is trying to move them the men out of their position so that they will not um, be where they need to be to cover their wives. Um, and, and so the wives are, fed, are left uncovered, so to speak, and out there like they're in the wilderness. And God said to come to pray for these men, pray for your sons, pray for your husbands, pray for your husband who is coming as well. Pray for your uncles, pray for men in the pulpit, God says, because the enemy, if you can attack the head, then the whole body suffers. So there, there's, there's, a, there's some prayer, strategic prayer that has to go forth for the men in this hour, says God. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. I'm just going to wait and see if the Lord gives me anything else. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Blessed be your name, O God. Hallelujah. <coughs> Excuse me. Worthy are you, Lord. Worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be your name, O God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Karaboshia Randere Bosa Kikere Handara Boko. Yes, we gotta pray for our men. I'm telling you, they're under some serious attacks. All right. Thank you, Lord. Because the enemy thinks if he can if he can attack the head, it is a reason that the devil um, actually hates marriages because it's a type of Christ and the church. All right, it's a type of Christ and the church. The enemy always tries to attack and destroy godly. God relationships, godly relationships, godly marriages. All right. So pray for that husband that you have not met yet. Pray for whatever obstacles may be in his way. Begin to pray. Pray for your sons. Pray for your uncles. Pray for your shepherds who are, are, are men. Pray for men who are ministers of the gospel as well in this hour. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If anybody <coughs> needs prayer, I just have a few, a couple more minutes that I can pray with you. Then I gotta go do some stuff here. All right. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the shout of the Lord be in your spirit now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for um. All right, I thank you, Lord, for strength for you, Shirley. You're teaching first grade vacation Bible school. I pray that your strength will come from the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for the turnaround in all of our lives now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, God bless you all. God bless, God bless, God bless. Until the next time, I love you all. Um, just be strong, continue to go forth, amen, continue to decree and declare and rejoice in what God has said in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.